it's Thursday, March 24th, 2022. Thanks for watching the Calvary Briefing. Today's Calvary Briefing was influenced by a group project that I was a part of. On Monday night, in meeting as elders here at Calvary, we gathered and read Scripture and prayed and planned, and we spent some time in Matthew chapter 6. And that time brought to my mind some brief thoughts that I wanted to share with all of you today. What are your priorities? What do you wake up intending to do each day? What drives your decision making? It's easy to wake up and just start doing without thinking about our priority or about any priorities for that matter. Jesus has a lot to say about priorities. In Matthew 6, verses 24 through 33, Jesus talks about anxiety. This body of verses is a part of a larger section in Matthew called the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew 6, 24, Jesus begins this section of verses by saying, do not be anxious about your life. Do not be anxious about your life. Uh, today, these words of Jesus are significant for us to consider. Headlines all around us seem to be screaming at us. Is the war in Ukraine the beginning of World War III? Here are just some headlines from the internet this morning. The smaller bombs that could turn Ukraine into a nuclear war zone. Nearly 3.5 million Ukrainians flee the country. Ukraine war threatens to cause global food crisis. And then this one, brace yourself, grocery prices are about to go through the roof. Jesus goes on after verse 24 and gives the major reason as to why we should not be anxious about our lives. And the reason is, quite simply, God is in control. And he illustrates this point by pointing to birds and flowers. God takes care of them. He will take care of you. Instead of anxiety, Jesus gives his followers a priority. A priority that we should be seeking. Many of you know where this section of verses goes, it concludes with Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. I want to just take a few moments and concentrate on three things in this verse. First of all, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is a phrase that we see in the Gospels 126 times. Jesus uses the phrase a lot. And when we see that phrase, kingdom of God, we can understand the word to basically mean the rule and the reign of God. Wherever God is ruling and reigning, the kingdom is there. The kingdom of God is something that we can look back at and see in the past. It's something that is here right now, and it's something that we look forward to in the future. There will be a heaven, which is a glorious example of the kingdom, when everything will be in subjection to the king. The kingdom of God is not a realm or a people, but the kingdom of God creates a realm, and it creates a people. What is His righteousness? That's a word that we use quite frequently. We see it in the Bible. The word righteousness has the word right in it. Righteousness quite simply means conforming to a standard. In the Bible, God gives us a standard. He tells us how to live. He tells us how to live rightly. And that is righteousness. So we are told by Jesus, seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And what does it mean, by the way, to seek? Well, to seek something is to actively pursue it. 
If you've ever lost something in your house that you needed to grab right away, you know what it means to actively pursue something. D.A. Carson, speaking of seeking God's kingdom and righteousness, writes this, Jesus' disciples are not simply to refrain from the pursuit of temporal things as their primary goal in order to differentiate themselves from the pagans. Instead, they are to replace such pursuits with goals of greater significance. To seek first the kingdom of God is to desire, above all, to enter into, submit to, and participate in spreading the news of the saving reign of God. The messianic kingdom already inaugurated by Jesus and to live so as to store up treasure in heaven in the prospect of the kingdom's completion. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. If Matthew 6, 33 was your priority, what would it mean to you personally as you opened your eyes on a new day, as you made decisions, as you decided what to do. What would this mean if Matthew 6, 33 set the priority for your family, for your marriage, in all of your relationships, to seek first the kingdom of God and His rightness in everything that had to do with your family? And what would it mean if Matthew 6, 33 was the priority of every person who was a part of Calvary Church, and we were constantly seeking God's kingdom, His rule and reign. As George Frederick Handel in the 1700s considered the kingdom of God and its glory and what a wonderful priority this is, he wrote an entire piece of music called The Messiah. And the big point that the Messiah arrives at is this chorus called the Hallelujah Chorus. And I think of the glory of the kingdom of God and what this priority means as I read these words from the Hallelujah Chorus to close this briefing. The kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ and of His Christ. And He shall reign forever and ever and he shall reign forever and ever. And he shall reign forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.